Hi, I'm Andrea Kawabata, and I'm an extension agent for Coffee and Orchard Crops with the University of Hawaii Amanoa CTAR Kona Cooperative Extension Service. This presentation will go over the basics of grafting, why coffee is grafted, how to graft coffee, as well as provide a demonstration of coffee grafting. Plant grafting is a vegetative propagation technique that joins two or more plants into one. The upper part of the graft or the scion becomes the top of the plant, and in this case, is desired for producing quality coffee berries. And the lower portion, or the rootstock, becomes part of the trunk and the root system. Grafting is common with fruit tree, vegetable, and ornamental plant propagation. For a graft to be successful, the cambium layers of the scion and rootstock must be in contact, connect, and be held together by callus at the graft wound site. The cambium is a thin layer of living cells just below the bark of the branch. Cambium cells divide and create new cells that make up the xylem and phloem, or parts of the branch that carry water and nutrients up the tree, and sugars and carbohydrates up and down the tree. A healthy graft union will allow the xylem and phloem to increase branch as well as tree growth. In general, grafting is done to perpetuate clones or mother plant genetic material, to change varieties or cultivars, improve resistance or tolerance to pests and diseases, decrease the amount of time to fruiting with mature branch materials, create dwarf trees, optimize cross-pollination pollination, and repair damaged trees. In plants such as roses, grafting can include an interstock or branch that is grafted between the rootstock and scion to produce certain plant forms like tree roses. In Hawaii, the reason we graft coffee and recommend the planting of grafted coffee trees is to tolerate the presence of coffee root knot nematode or Melodogyne conaensis. As the name would suggest, this root pest was first found in Kona and has since been spread to other parts of Hawaii Island, including the Kau district. These microscopic nematodes look like tiny worms under magnification. Coffee root knot nematodes feed and mature inside the roots of plants. Their feeding causes nodding and abnormal enlargements of the root called galls. Coffee root knot nematodes typically do not survive very long without a host plant, except in very low numbers and more likely in the egg stage in the soil. Root galls are the primary symptom of root knot nematodes. The amount of feeder roots and overall root mass will be reduced and those remaining may look swollen, stubby, and quirky. External plant signs of nematode caused root damage include flagging or flaccid, droopy leaves, yellowing of leaves, premature ripening or abortion of coffee cherry, and overbearing decline. Coffee yields may be reduced by 20 to 25% or greater, and plants can succumb to nematode infestation. Coffee root knot nematode is not a new threat to Hawaii farmers. In the mid-1950s, superintendent of the Kona Research Station in Kainaliu, Edward, otherwise known as Eddie Fukunaga, was challenged with solving a replant issue in Kona. Young coffee trees were dying before their fourth year in the ground. From the 70s to 80s, Mr. Fukunaga and Dr. Phil Ito tested various rootstocks brought in from Brazil. These trials resulted in the selection of a rootstock that provided tolerance to Kona's nematode. This rootstock was Cafea Liberica variety de Reverie and received the name Fukunaga after Mr. Fukunaga passed away in 1984. From the 90s to early 2000s, researchers and Cooperative Extension continue to learn more about Kona's coffee root knot nematode and its control, and produce pamphlets such as these as outreach materials for farmers. In 2006, a field planting of various rootstock materials was established at the Kona Research Station. At the encouragement of late farm manager Mark Meisner, the continuation of this trial in 2016 resulted in the only known long-term coffee root knot nematode field trial, which was conducted by Dr. Roxana Myers of USDA PBARC, Dr. Stuart Nakamoto, myself, extension staff, research staff, and volunteers. This long-term nematode field trial began in 2005 when the coffee was grafted onto various rootstocks. The trees were field planted in 2006 and data was collected the following year. Some typical seedlings could already be seen in decline at this point. While no data was collected after the first year, the trees were maintained by Kona Research Station staff. In 2015, the trees were stumped to control coffee berry borer, and then from 2016 to 2019, data was collected for tree health, vertical height, stump circumference, survivability, and yield. 
Typica grafted onto seven different rootstocks were evaluated and compared to ungrafted Typica seedlings. By 2018, 81% of the Typica seedling trees were dead, while 100% of the Caffea liberica arnoldiana grafted trees remained alive. This aerial photo taken in 2016 of the field shows a lack of vigor as well as tree mortality of the Typica seedlings, Typica grafted onto purpurea or purpurescence rootstock, and typical grafted onto apoata or a robusta rootstock. The remaining typical trees were producing an average of less than half a pound of cherry per tree, while trees grafted onto liberica rootstock were producing an average of 15 to 24 pounds of cherry per tree during the 2017 to 2018 season. The results were published in the Hort Technology Journal and showed that the four liberica accessions of Arnoldiana and Fukunaga outranked all other rootstock and typical seedlings for highest average yield and tree lifespan. While coffee root knot nematode is not a new problem, particularly on the Big Island, it is still a very important challenge for growers to address, especially with the introductions of coffee berry borer and coffee leaf rust. Replacing and replanting trees costs money, and losing a tree before you can get a full productive life out of it causes losses in revenue. This issue of declining yields has been going on since the early 90s, even though the number of harvested acres has increased during these years. We've also seen this decline happening before coffee berry borer was discovered in Hawaii in 2010. And this downward trend continues as yield per acre slipped under 4,000 pounds in 2018, which was prior to the arrival of coffee leaf rust. Coffee root knot nematode has gone relatively unnoticed and has been underrated as a coffee pest because it is not an obvious in your face type of problem like coffee berry borer and coffee leaf rust. But the sooner farmers accept and address the reason or reasons for a decline in farm pr productivity, the faster recovery can be. Currently, no nematicides are approved for coffee in Hawaii, and so our only option is to plant or replant with grafted trees. Farmers must consider the investment cost of grafted trees and the benefits of a tree that will remain alive, healthy, and productive for 15 plus years, thereby recovering the cost of the grafted tree within its first three to five years after planting. In Hawaii, a majority of farms are planted with seedling coffee trees. However, with research extension and the influence of early adopters, there's been an increase in planting grafted trees on Liberica rootstock for nematode tolerance. While there are many types of grafts, such as the side veneer, splice, whip and tongue, saddle, in arching and budding, coffee is typically grafted by using the Reina method or essentially a cleft graft. So commercial producers use a splice graft method as well. In the wake of coffee leaf rust, there have been discussions about infield grafting of resistant coffee varieties onto existing rootstock trees in the field. The photo on the right shows two successful splice grafts of CLR resistant catamore hybrids onto rootstock suckers coming from the base of a tree that had been grafted with a typical variety some 40 years ago. I'll discuss infield grafting of coffee in another presentation and will focus on the Reina method during this one. When grafting coffee, you will need a few supplies including your cyan seedlings and rootstock seedlings. The cyan should be recently germinated with the parchment or papery covering still tightly enclosing the cotyledons or embryonic leaves. The rootstock should be potted and have at least three pairs of true leaves indicating that they have a well-established, strong root system that can support the graft. Be sure to label your cyan and rootstock materials with a pencil and create labels for the grafted plants as well. You should also have a clean, sharp razor blade and a pair of shears, at least 70% isopropyl or rubbing alcohol to clean and sterilize your cutting tools between grafts or at least between trays and racks, and a clean cloth or single-use paper towels to dry off the alcohol and to wipe off your tools. Provide yourself a clean, hard cutting surface like a block of wood cutting board, or table surface to slice the cyan base into a wedge or angle. Coffee seedling grafting requires spring-loaded side grafting clips, which can be purchased online or possibly at local farm and garden stores. You might ask if they have vegetable grafting clips. Lastly, you will need a clean rack and humidity chamber to place your newly grafted coffee trees into and to encourage the connection between cyan and rootstock. Germination of the rootstock and cyan can take one to three months to sprout. Since you need the rootstock seedlings to be at an advanced stage of development, germinate your rootstock seeds two to three months ahead of germinating the cyan seeds. 
This will give you time to also replant the rootstock seedlings into dibble tubes or tall pots and have the roots established. When transplanting, select only the strongest rootstock seedlings and cull out any that are diseased, J-rooted, and overall have poor vigor and health. If you have consistent problems with J-rooting, consider using deeper pots or trays to germinate rootstock seeds in so that the roots have deeper media to grow downwards into and can remain straight. Shallow trays can cause the roots to become J-rooted when the roots hit the bottom of the tray and grow back upwards or go sidewards. Long, straight roots will give a tree stability and better anticipated health and productivity when planted in the field. As the rootstock and cyan seedlings emerge and grow, monitor for fungal and bacterial diseases, slugs and snails, as well as insect pests such as green scale, aphids, and mealybugs, which could sap the plants of strength and vigor. Control these and other pests as needed. As a general rule of thumb, do not graft on rootstocks that are otherwise unhealthy and slow to grow compared to other rootstock seedlings. As drying out means death for newly grafted plants, find a cool shady location to graft under. Clean and sterilize your tools with alcohol and wipe off any excess alcohol and debris before trimming and making incisions. To create a cleft graft, select a healthy rootstock with at least three true leaves and trim the rootstock below the cotyledons to remove all of its leaves. Trimming below the embryonic pair of leaves will help to discourage future growth of rootstock suckers. Snip the cyan from the tray or if already pulled out, slice the cyan just above the root zone to remove it from its roots. Gently wipe off any media on the stem if necessary. Use the razor blade to create a wedge shaped point on the stem of the cyan. Then with a rocking motion, use the blade to cut a downward slit near the center of the rootstock stem. Use the edge of the blade to gently pry open the slice and then slide the cyan into the opening on the rootstock stem. Lastly, adjust the cyan to be sure that the cyan and rootstock cambiums are touching and then clip the union site to secure the rootstock and cyan together. On young, young seedlings, the front edge of the spring-loaded clip will provide enough pressure to secure the graft. When grafting coffee, avoid using cyan materials in which the cotyledons are emerging or completely expanded out of the parchment hull. Using these older cyan seedlings tend to result in lowered grafting success rates due to their increased transpiration and water loss from the expanding or expanded cotyledons prior to graft fusion. If you are new to grafting, start off with cyans that have long sturdy stems which are easier to handle. If the diameter of a rootstock is larger than the diameter of the cyan, Instead of making a slice down the center of the rootstock, offset the slice to one side to better match the cyan to the width of the rootstock cambium, which is indicated in green. Matt will demonstrate cleft grafting of coffee onto a Liberica rootstock. Greenwell Farms also has a great video on YouTube of their staff grafting coffee as well. Check it out. As mentioned earlier, some commercial farms use a splice graft to graft coffee. While the tools needed remain the same, the splice graft involves just a single angled slice to the rootstock and a single angled slice to the cyan. The cambiums of the cyan and rootstock are aligned and the graft is held together with a clip. This method can be simpler and faster than a cleft graft but is better suited for rootstock and cyan with similar diameters. 
Here are a few examples of coffee that has been grafted, clipped and labelled and ready for the humidity chamber. Immediately after grafting, place the newly grafted plants in a chamber or mist box that provides consistent high humidity to prevent the plants from drying out and wilting. High humidity is crucial for graft survival. The humidity chamber box should also not be placed in direct sunlight. During the fusion of the cambium layers, some signs may wilt a bit. As long as relative humidity is kept high in the chamber and the graft heals well, the droopy scions typically perk back up as water and nutrients are transported from the rootstock to the scion. If the chamber has an open bottom and exposed to soil, be sure that it is elevated to at least 18 inches above the ground to protect from contamination by nematodes and other soil-borne pests and diseases. If using an enclosed container, be sure to open the container briefly to allow for air exchange throughout the container. Hold the newly grafted plants in the humidity chamber for at least four weeks to allow the cambiums to fuse and the wound to heal. Remove any dead or dying plants and monitor for snails, slugs, and insect pests and treat as necessary. If a disease is present, treat it quickly as diseases can spread quickly in warm, humid environments and cause major losses. Control and remove weeds to reduce competition with the young grafts. Once the graft union between the scion and the rootstock has fused, the clip can be carefully removed, washed, dried, and then reused. Once the graft union is healed, acclimatization is needed to gradually increase the sunlight and UV tolerance of the plants. Move the plants out of the humidity chamber and place them under shade cloth to begin this acclimatization process. The plants must be watered well to keep the media moist and a general slow release fertilizer should also be provided to support root, shoot and leaf growth. After a couple of weeks under shade cloth, the plants can be moved to full sun to complete the acclimatization process. Depending on the size of the original pot that the graft was completed in, repotting of the grafted plant is optional. If the graft was done in a dibble tube, like the yellow tube shown to the left, repotting is recommended after the graft has fused and true leaves develop. This will allow the root system to expand and prevent a situation of the plant being root bound and limited in growth. Forestry tubes that are 10 inches or longer is recommended for potting up grafted trees for proper taproot and root hair development. Many of these forestry tubes have a large hole at the bottom of the pot that will air prune the roots and prevent J rooting. When the grafted trees are about 12 to 18 inches tall and under a year old, they are ready to be field planted. Here are photos of successfully grafted coffee plants at different stages of development. The photo on the left shows a graft that was offset to the right to better align the cambiums of the rootstock and scion. The center photo shows a grafted tree about three months after being grafted. Its wound has healed nicely and is growing well. The photo on the right shows a coffee plant that was grafted about six months ago and this plant is showing good root growth and is ready to be field planted. All three photos show slow release fertilizer prills, either yellow or gray, that's been provided for plant nutrition. Avoid keeping, purchasing, and planting trees that lack in vigor and plant the strongest and healthiest trees for the best establishment and production potential. Slow growing trees often have something wrong with their graft union and or their root system. Some reasons for graft failure include rootstock and scion incompatibility, the cambiums not meeting and fusing properly, the scion was not healthy, the scions dried out, the rootstock did not have a healthy root system, or the graft was attacked by insects or disease. If scions are cut too close to the roots, sometimes roots will grow near the, near the graft union. Only if the graft is strong, trim off the roots carefully and retain these trees for planting. If not, cull these as well. There are quite a few resources of information on coffee root not nematode, its impact on coffee, nematode sampling procedures, and grafting that can be found online. We also have an online publication and pictorial guide to coffee grafting that is complementary to this presentation. Grafting is one of those things that requires a steady hand, patience, and practice. And with experience, you'll get faster and more successful. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me by email, phone, text, or even mail. Additional coffee, coffee berry bore, and coffee leaf rust information and resources can be found at my website, hawaiicoffeeed.com. I'd like to acknowledge and thank the funding agencies and centers, as well as our partners and collaborators. We appreciate your unwavering support. Thank you.